Hi, I'm John Glynn. In this particular tutorial, we're going to have a quick overview of doing close-up photography, just using really basic kit. The whole of this video is just using my mobile telephone. Uh, if you have a, a camera, there's no harm in trying to use that as well. You don't need any special lenses, that's not the purpose of this tutorial. It's just to do with close-ups. How close can you get to your subject, either through walking close, and just being as close as you can physically or zooming in okay so you can see the picture of a bumblebee here all, all I've done on this bumblebee is get as close as I possibly can I didn't zoom in I just walked really close up I put the camera as close as I could to the bumblebee and filled the frame of the camera there's no cropping what you see is the whole of the, the back of the camera effectively okay I filled the frame uh, as I said, took this picture of the bumblebee um, as close as I possibly could, just basically on auto, nothing special. This particular image is of a caterpillar which was marching quite fast across the pavement, so I had to very quickly take some pictures. I took about seven pictures in all before it kind of disappeared off the pavement. And you can see that there are problems with having taken it so quickly. Focus is a major issue. Uh, the animal is actually moving at quite a speed, so it was very difficult to freeze frame it using my mobile telephone. I had to get in really close, so I was um, bending over really close to the subject. And the closer you are to a subject, the more shaky you become. So there might well be a little bit of camera shake in there. But on top of that, the, the main problem is the movement of the subject itself was quite fast and quicker than the actual exposure time so there is a motion blur and because you're so close to something your focus has to be extremely accurate and the camera really didn't know quite what to focus on in fact on most of it the background sharper but the the actual creature itself was not being captured by by the camera itself it didn't really recognize it as being anything so it didn't focus on it and i didn't really have time to focus on it manually because it was moving too quickly. So um, this is as good as I actually got, the, the second image here, and it's not very sharp. It's really important, if you're photographing animals in particular, we like to see the head of the animal to be sharp, and in this case, um, it isn't. So it's not a very successful image, but it is to show how hard it is to take these sort of pictures with a mobile telephone, okay? But it doesn't mean you shouldn't have it if you're using a mobile telephone, really you don't want to zoom in because you will lose picture quality. So ideally what you want to be able to do is just get in as close as you possibly can and take the pictures when they are close up, as I'm doing right now. So all I've done is bring the camera right the way down close. Hopefully it'll focus. Uh, you can buy small tripods so that your camera won't wobble too, mat too much. And then take take the picture. So it's a close up of various objects. The mobile telephone happens to be very good at this kind of thing. Most mobile telephones can get in very, very close indeed. And they, the world changes when you're doing close up photography. So that's a, something to do is just literally getting really close. If you're using a standard camera, you may find there are limitations in how close you can get depending on the lens that you're actually using. So uh, in some cases, you may have to zoom in and just see how close you can get. Others, you might need a special filter or lens that enables you to do close-up photography. But there's some lovely shapes and forms in the landscape. And maybe just simple pictures like this can make, a, can make you look and see things in a different way. They're very graphic, lovely colours and shapes and tones all the shades you have there of greens and reds and browns and greys it's worth getting in close and having a look and deconstructing the landscape so with your uh, mobile telephone what i'm wanting you to do is to get in close to subjects you don't have to use a mobile telephone if you've got a camera you could do the same with your camera of course you can either just walk in very, very close to something, 
Uh, flowers are obviously a good example, or bumblebees if you can find any. And just see how close you can get before the whole thing becomes um, out of focus, really. Uh, you may have to move backwards and forwards with your body to actually get the right distance for your camera and keep sharpness. Okay. The other thing to do um, to just see the effect of, of getting in close, this is just me zoom, not actually zooming, I'm actually just moving the camera close. If you come further back and you zoom in, you may find that has a different sort of look, a different feel to it. All I've done is a is a mobile telephone, so it's a four times zoom on a on this particular mobile telephone. If you've got a camera, you may find that you get a far more powerful zoom lens on your camera. Um, mobile telephones tend not to have such powerful zoom lenses built in. This is a four times one. So I've zoomed in, and that may give a slightly different feel to your picture from actually being further out and that's now not zoomed in and just walking really close. Okay, it may give it a sort of different feel with perspective and sharpness. So it's a matter of seeing what the differences are. And if you do zoom in and now zoomed in again, is it how close can I get? Or does it prevent me from getting as close as, as not zooming, but just walking in close? Okay, you can see that uh, in this particular picture, my the sharpness isn't as great. So although I've zoomed in, as I move closer, anything in the foreground is quickly out of focus. While if I zoom out and move closer, I get a different sharpness level and a different perspective. So these are factors to, to be considered when you're, when you're going to be using a camera and actually get close up or just um, using a zoom it's trying to work out which one is your best uh, policy or the best approach for the type of picture you're trying to create there may not be one one system fitting all okay and it's a matter of taking a number of different pictures possibly uh, and then seeing which one kind of works for your particular subject matter so have a go so repeating that again is um, zoom out so that you're not zooming at all so you have the widest angle, the widest view. You can see the most through the viewfinder on the back of your camera. Then you just walk in close and see what the feel of your picture is. And as you move it around, you may find that different points of your picture will become sharp. There we are. I've sharpened that bit up by just touching the back of my camera. It focuses. Otherwise, it'll try and guess where I'm focusing. So you can see how I can change the focus point. I'm just touching the back of the camera. That gives quite a different sort of feel to my pictures, okay? And creates a different set of depth to the photographs. If the background is out of focus, it feels different. Oh, it's quite a windy day. And uh, and then you can have different points of focus, and that may give you a different way of, of seeing the pictures in depth. As opposed to um, just zooming in, and there we are again with a different approach. Now, when I'm zooming in, I have to go a little bit further back to get sharpness. I can't get quite as close, but it has a different feel to the sort of picture that I can create. Okay, And so there are occasions where zooming in would be better. You can see if I focus on the background, foreground will go out of focus. Put it on the foreground, the background goes out of focus. And you can get some different effects by just choosing a point of focus. What, is it, what are you wanting to focus on? And your eye will always go to the sharp point of a picture uh, and will ignore the softer edges or out of focus areas. Okay, so have a go with just um, changing the point of focus, zooming in, fo zooming out, and just get a feel for the actual camera and the lens and how they, how the lens uh, deals with different subject matters. And flowers are pretty good because they don't get up and wander off. And you get a different depth, so you can try different ideas. Maybe not on such quite a, a windy day as I'm doing today. Okay, so have a go, and maybe at some point we can catch up and see the results. Thanks for watching.